Hey there survivors, how's it going? It's Douglas here at Drownway Productions, bringing you another Screaming Ghostface Collectors video. And today's video is going to be more of an art project than an unboxing. Some of you may recall that in a recent video, I received a Gen 1 aged Billy Loomis style mask from Scream Rehab. If you don't know who Scream Rehab is, you can go check him out over on Instagram. He does offer several different types of Scream products, different services like whitening, reshrouding, stuff like that. And they also have created this aged Gen 1 Billy Loomis concept mask. I do want to stress that this is not a recast, a retool, anything like that of an actual Gen 1. This is a ground up sculpt. So it's not 100% accurate to one of those masks, but it's a very cool concept nonetheless. Now I'm not sure if he'll still be offering these at the time of recording, you'll have to check with him, but he offers more of a Scream 6 style paint job on these. It's not exact to those masks, it's a little bit custom too, but a bit more akin to what we see on film. However, he sent me a nice flawed blank that he's gonna allow me to paint up myself and that's what we'll be doing in today's video. And I'm not gonna be painting mine exactly like his. I wanna go with something a little bit closer to a realistic aged ghost face mask look. Now, of course, with all the cracks and stuff like that, it's not gonna be 100% accurate to any real mask, but I wanna go with something a little bit closer to what we would see on a mask that age today. So what you're about to see is an extremely sped up version of me painting, meshing, and shrouding this mask. I will be giving some commentary here and there, but of course we'll have some nice background music for you all to enjoy. And at the end, there will be some great finished shots of the mask. Yet again, thank you to Scream Rehab for sending me this blank, and I hope you all enjoy the video. So as I mentioned in the previous video, unboxing this blank, there are a few defects with this one. Some air bubbles, a couple of blemishes with some extra latex. And the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is dremel those spots off. After that, we'll start basing out the mask. I've had a lot of people ask me what type of latex paint I use, and I'm currently using Mabry Monsters Nightshades. They work really great. You can buy pretty much any color you need. If you know how to do color mixing, you can get anything you need. As for here, we're gonna use some zombie flesh lightened up with just a little bit of gloss white. Now for the paint job on this, I want to go for a somewhat realistic look for how an aged Gen 1 would actually turn out. So we're going to make this piece nice and yellow. I added just a little bit of yellow to our mixture and we're going to go ahead and base it again. Once that base is dried, I'm applying a little bit of alcohol and brown ink over the entire mask. We'll let the ink dry a bit and then remove a majority of it with a bit of alcohol and a sponge. After we've removed a lot of the brown ink, 
we're going to take that same yellow base and go over a majority of the mask, trying to lighten up and make those brown details a bit more subtle. The camera corrupted the next step, but I just took a little bit of the brown ink and misted that around the eyes to give the illusion of a darkened eye mesh glue. After letting that dry for a bit, I decided to go in and airbrush some pink bacterial dots. My idea here is pretty much that after they put Billy down like Old Yeller, some of his blood would be on that one side of the mask and possibly it was removed or flaked off after all these years, but perhaps it caused some bacterial infection to the mask itself. Many of you who collect these vintage masks have seen this before. I don't know if it can be brought on by blood, but I just thought it would make for a pretty interesting concept. Initially, I was gonna go with blue, but I think pink would be a little bit closer to what would actually happen. Now we're just going to go in with our Mabry Nightshades Black and fill in the mouth, nose, and do the eyeliner. Once that was done, I decided to take a little bit more of that brown ink and go into some of the larger cracks, creating just a little bit more depth and also weathering the areas around the cracks to make it look like the vinyl was somewhat petrified. Vinyl masks do not age like this, but some older masks that have been left on styrofoam heads can become petrified, hardened, crack, and you know, I thought that maybe we would just kind of lean into that. Pretty much satisfied with the paint job for the moment, so let's go ahead and add in the eye mesh. Next up comes the shroud. So for this, I wanted the shroud to look really old, tattered, kind of moth-eaten, but more so like the cotton had become dry rotted and was starting to fall apart. So we're gonna go ahead and use a bit of old rotten cotton to make this rotten shroud. As you can tell, this was part of a t-shirt that had gotten really, really old, was starting to fall apart, and I figured it would make for the perfect shroud candidate.
Next up, we're gonna do a bit of distressing work to make that fabric look even more tattered and torn. So we're going in with the seam ripper here to tatter the bottom edge of the shroud a bit and also create some more holes in the fabric. Now at this point, I was pretty pleased with the mask. However, I noticed the pink turned out a bit lighter than I anticipated. And after showing it to a couple of friends, they thought the blue dot idea would actually work pretty well. So I went ahead and added some blue dots right around the areas with the same pink bacterial infection. Who knows, maybe there were multiple infections. Though blue dots are more commonly due to dyes being in contact with the mask, not necessarily organic matter. And with that, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. This is a bit more of a realistic take on the aged Gen 1 look. However, of course, this is not accurate to what would happen in real life. Regardless, I hope you all enjoyed the outcome. I greatly appreciate Scream Rehab sending me this blank, and this has been a very, very fun project.